Hi class, it's Bill Berry, <clears throat> and here is a quick video on using and installing the sample databases that come with MySQL and come with your textbook as well. So let's take a quick look at how this works and how you can find those files. The files that are provided for you that install databases are never in any kind of binary or rich format for databases. They are usually actual SQL scripts that do this work for you. So the two-part process, which we'll talk about in the video, uh, will basically be installing, uh, finding those scripts and making sure we know where they are, and then opening them up and running those things. And both the author and the MySQL databases will be something that we touch on. So the first thing we need to do is if we want to install the ones from the author, which we'll be using for class quite a bit, we'll want to go find those. Well, where do we find them? Well, if you go to Canvas and you go to our course and you go to Files, you can find them easily there. And then you'll notice that under Files, if you look down under Sample, they're all, they all start with the word Sample DBs, you'll find that there are the sample databases that come with the textbook, your author's name, M-U-R-A-C-H, that's the one you want. You can right click that guy and say Save Target As or whatever your browser does for this. And we're going to save it uh, for the moment on the desktop. And then that's it. So we have open that we have saved that file. Uh, we'll have it sitting on the desktop, so that's great. Notice I have none of those databases here. Otherwise, I would see OM, EX, and AP, all the sample databases, but they're not here. So first, you need to make a local connection. Never open these things by themselves. Always make sure you have a local connection. So if you don't have that, of course, you click on Local Instance in MySQL, and it will load up everything, and then make sure you've done that. If you try to open it outside of that, it doesn't have any place to put these things. It doesn't know what server to put them on, so always do that. Next thing is you go and open that script. So I'm going to say File, Open SQL Script, and then I'm going to point to the desktop, and I'm going to click on that file, and I'm going to say Open. Now, this particular one uh, will create both the schema, it will set up the database and all the tables and all their structure and all their rules and all of that stuff, and it will also have the data in it. So if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see we create general ledger, terms, vendors, etc. And then down here, you'll start seeing that there's data. Now, we don't know all of these SQL commands, but it doesn't matter. You see data in here, right? All these rows are just data being thrown into the tables. So this script will do that whole thing. Remember that to run an entire script, don't select anything, just click anywhere. It doesn't matter anywhere in the script. And then you can run this first lightning bolt, which says the executed portion or everything if there's no selection. So click that or do shift control enter and it's going to it's going to run uh, run all of these commands and then it's going to take a second to do all of that stuff. And you'll see the results of all those commands down here. So that's great. Now, uh, we haven't seen anything happen over here on the left, but you'll notice there's this little refresh button right here under schemas. And if you click that, you will see that it will repopulate it and there we'll have it. So here's OM, here's EX, and here's AP. Right now, some of these things, it sometimes seems to get stuck in some of these places where if I do this, it says table fetching, and I can try to make it you know, to sort of kick it. There's a couple things I might try to kick it back into place. I can just restart the local instance and see if magically that will solve the problem. And in this case, let's see if it did. Uh, tables, there we go. Okay, so there's AP and did EX work? Tables, yes. Okay, so everything is good. All of these are there. And if you open them up, you will see that they're all present. Okay, so that's one way to kick it. Otherwise, if you exit MySQL and come back, they're all there. So all of those uh, databases are there and all of the data. So I, I'll have another video exploring on exploring data, but if you click here and say, you know, here's the invoices, right click and select rows, and here you see all of the rows coming out and everything makes sense here. So that's how you get the data from the author. Now, if something happens and this data gets messed up, you do the exact same thing, right? You follow the same set of of instructions as you did before. So you'll notice that one of the things that happens here is it always has these uh, these uh, commands that say drop database if exists. So in other words, if the AP database already exists, it kills it and then it starts again from scratch. So that's why it's nice if something goes wrong and you mess up this data, which you 
might, might do, especially once we get into how to delete and alter data and you're doing practices. So it's fine, just run this script again. Just open it up again once you're in the local connection, open it up and then run it again and it'll do, it'll put everything back just the way it's supposed to be. So that's how that works. So that's a pretty easy thing to do to make sure you have all of those things installed. And then uh, the other thing that may happen is when you install MySQL, you had the option of installing some sample databases. And if you didn't, you can go get those separately, but uh, those also come in the form of scripts. So if something happens to those, and remember those two are going to be Sakila, right, and then World. Right, sys is something else, right? Sys is system stuff, and we really don't want to go messing with that, but since we have root permission, that may show up. So if something happens with Sakila or World, it's something that you're going to need to fix that as well. To do that, you have to go, again, find those scripts, but notice where they're going to be. If you go to this PC, you go to C drive, you go to Program Files x86, MySQL, Samples and Examples, sample databases. You'll notice that whole thing's being created up here. Then if you go to the world, there is worldschema.sql. You open that and run it. Now, even though it says schema, it's really schema plus data. So it really should say schema and data. It will do the same thing like the sample ones from the author. So that one's easy to do. If you want to do the Sakila, it's a lot bigger database. So they've separated this stuff out. So if that's the case, you would first run schema, which will set up the database and create the tables, give them their structure and rules. And then you'll, you'll open and run the data one and that will actually populate the data into the table so it'll be a two-step process but the nice thing is you have scripts that can recreate these things from scratch so there shouldn't be a scenario in which you lose those and can't get back to them so that is a super quick introduction to how you install the samples and how you reinstall them if they get messed up that brings us to the end of this particular video let me know if you have uh, questions about that and we will continue with another video that will talk about how to explore data and how to look at table definitions and some useful stuff that you can do once you have this sample data and that will be on our next video so stay tuned and thanks for watching this video